Yeah. All right. So we're recording. If you're watching on YouTube, you missed the first part of the show. Actually, you missed a lot of the first part of the show if you didn't watch on what what's your handle on DLive? Uh Bodhi.agora. Yeah. This is this is just kind of a kickback show. It was either a kickback show or no show. Since we didn't do a show yesterday, I said I can't miss two shows in a row, so this is a kickback show. We're just we're just hanging yeah. out and we're kind of I guess we're just kind of orbiting around Mac Bag. Mac Bags? Mac Bags, yeah. We're orbiting around Mac Bags. That's kind of creepy. Somebody should let him know that people are orbiting around him on a podcast still, show. I'm I'm sure he's well aware of all the media controversy and all the like Got even him. winning the championship and then being booed. Oh yeah, yeah. Got that video. Might play that. I don't know. It, yeah. It's just, it's mind numbing. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, everybody's upset because, well, one, they're mistaken. They think it's a, a male to female, yes. trying to wreck the females division in wrestling because that's an accomplishment or something. I mean, I'm right. sure it is, but, I. I can't foresee anyone consciously trying to do that as a man. Like the uh, Yeah, I'm 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 not even fully in this yet. I'm not quite ready. I'm not quite powered up, mentally prepared, although I guess I'll do my best, but I I I've actually been wanting to talk about this for a while. I've and been meaning great to video, good. but well, I've been meaning to do a video. It's just, and you and I actually talked about doing a, a separate video, and then I was like, "Well, it's Daily Tuesdays here, so mm-hmm. we're gonna do it here." Uh, I I really have been wanting to say something about this for a while, and I had some great thoughts. At least I thought they were great. And right now, I don't. <laughs> do Do you want to start us off? I have a thought, but I'm not. I don't know if I want to start with that. Uh well, Mac Beggs did nothing wrong. That's that's the thing. Mac that, Beggs did nothing wrong. It's that simple. Uh, take a kid who wants to compete wrestling. It's their passion. They happen to be transgender. The rules prevent them from competing in the league they want to compete in. And then everyone gets upset when they follow the rules. Yeah, and they call him a cheater. Right, and he's not cheating. He's actually well. following the rules. See, cheating. You you don't you break the rules. That's cheating. Mac Beg, Matt, Matt Beggs didn't go up to the you know the the whatever officials they are and say, "Yo man, yo man, I used to be the girl and uh, now I'm a boy and I got this testosterone going through me and dude, I think I could totally rip it." I don't want to be in the boys' division. I want to be in the girls' division because I want to totally rip it. He didn't mm-hmm. do that. He went to the Let's... officials and he said, Dudes, I love wrestling. Yeah. I want to wrestle with the dudes. Who do you think Mac Beggs would rather wrestle, the girls or the boys? The boys. He identifies as a boy. Yeah. So he wants to wrestle with the boys. You know, the, the image that we have, I... I picked the front image there. I can't stand this image. I picked it in the front and I kind of made it transparent to loom over the other images. Most of the images that I could find had this weird kind of connotation, but this is the worst. This. That's why I chose this. What's that? That's why I chose specifically not to use it for for my thumbnail. Yeah, I wanted to use it for illustration purposes. Right. I picked it on purpose. I wanted, and and I and but I wanted to transparent it because I didn't want it to be the only thing you saw. But I wanted you to see this is the looming narrative. There you see that if you take pictures during the course of a wrestling match between individuals, you can almost find moments where it looks like someone looks like an arrogant Pricklestein totally dominating and destroying an innocent victim. Right. And that's what they've done. That's what they, they have. They have Mac Beggs, 
choking out a girl with a look of fear on her eyes. Now, I guarantee you that girl. I, wow, well, I won't guarantee you. I can't that. But I'll, <laughs> I will bet Bodie's lunch, and he eats well, that that girl is is th that's humiliating to her. She's a competitor. I bet you she's a hardcore competitor that was not afraid. That right. that and as as a matter of fact, I think didn't 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 he come close to losing? That yeah. wasn't an easy match. No. No. <laughs> None of the matches uh, are easy. He still won. Like <laughs> It's it just because you identify as Bell or you have testosterone or you're not just going to be magnificently awesome at wrestling. Like there's an innate skill in this individual. Right. The question is like, does this does Mac have a a, a certain level of testosterone that gives him an unfair advantage over the girls? I don't I don't know, but you I'm, you may have some scientific evidence for me. Well, I don't have any scientific evidence per se but the hormone replacement therapy is a really low dose of testosterone it's not near the levels of what would be considered uh juicing or performance enhancing or it's basically enough to give them facial hair and some it, it's like <laughs> it's it's nothing um heavy duty and again i i don't know the science behind it I don't know whether he has an unfair advantage, unfair advantage or not, but I do know that he wants to wrestle with the dudes. Yeah. <laughs> and and they let won't him. let him. All right. All because of a rule enacted what, like a year ago? Was it a year ago? Uh, maybe two, 2016, two years ago, uh, stating you had to wrestle your the same gender on your birth certificate. So, I you know, which you know, Bodie doesn't and I, we, it's, it it okay. just doesn't make any sense because a lot of wrestling doesn't even distinguish between male and female. Like you, you heard what James Weeks was saying, right? Yeah, what, you remember what growing up wrestling, and they would wrestle guys, girls, whatever. It was it, there was no division that way. Ty Gananda Swaraj has joined us. Ty, what's up? Glad you're here. Uh, you and he said, isn't... You... Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Well, you can watch both, Ty. You can switch back and forth. Because I like getting your comments here. That's so, true. So there. Uh, he says, isn't wrestling co-ed in some schools? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Res wrestling is co-ed in some schools. You know, you and I, we have a bit of a different opinion about... I will say... <clears throat> I think I think we have a different opinion as far as how we would like gender to be in society. I think both of us agree that gender is a social construct. Yeah. And I would rather see gender's social constructs set, stay pretty much male, female, boy, girl, man, woman. Uh I'd like to see it stay that way. I, I don't really, I can't say like, okay, objectively, why? I, I don't know. I'm trying to search for that. I don't know if I have a good reason. Still searching. Right. If I don't ultimately come up with one, I may change my mind. But I'm still, like, I'd prefer to see male, female, man, woman. I would like to see what you think of when you think of male expanded. What you think of when you think of female expanded. Like me. Even me, like, I have a strange mixture of what you would call traditionally male female qualities like right. like for instance probably because I grew up around women when I sit you know how women cross their legs yeah that's how I do right I, I do it that way I still cross my leg I actually no one crossed their legs even in front of like that was actually for the most part shunned my brother actually still makes fun of me for crossing my I don't get it <laughs> It's just I, like I'm it's, more comfortable physically, whatever. I like it feels you better know, on my spine. Like it's okay for a woman to fold her legs up underneath her butt when she's sitting on a chair, but it's not okay for a man to do it. Well, right. I do it and I don't freaking care. <laughs> right. Like what does that matter? It's, it's well, mixed. that's yeah, and that's where I'm with you like the the whole notion of what male and what female is. 
I think needs to be expanded. Like I've so, never been I've never been a fan of bro code or any of these secret understandings or it, like I've never picked up on it. Never really much cared for it. It's just like I I have my friends and then I have everybody else. Like Yeah, I don't have a special category I, for for dude friends. I don't. As a matter of fact, I think through my life I have had probably more friends that were girls, like closer friends that were girls than guys. I mean, I've had my share of guy friends. As a matter of fact, I'd say, you know, my current bestie is is a dude, as it so happens. But oh, um, thanks. It's not you. <laughs> it's someone <laughs> that lives here. So, you know, it's someone in the real, right in my that I see regularly in the flesh. As a matter of fact, it's it's Professor Rambo. So yeah, I, I, you know. We see each other regularly, and we have a lot of things in common. And But his wife, Katina, I love her. She's great. And I'm good friends with her, like, not just because she's... As a matter of fact, I met him because of her, because we connected. We connected, in a, of all places, we connected at uh, my daughter's elementary school. I was giving a presentation about writing, and she was giving a presentation about art, and I saw that she had, she was displaying. Now, see, this is another, a non-male type of hello. I see her there. So this is <laughs> another. You're not supposed. She's, uh, she's trying to sneak the vacuum out of the room, and I'm trying to tell her not to vacuum right now. Won't let me vacuum. No, no don't don't vacuum. Don't vacuum. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, bad audio is a hate crime. That would be bad odd audio. So, uh, so I like, unless you're gay and you're a dude, you're not supposed to like fine art, modern art. And I love that. That's yeah. That was always I love I that stuff. Museums and what, what else? Uh, there's something else. That, oh, I, I like to sew and stitch things and do. I went through a sewing phase. I was actually pretty good at it. Hand sewing. I made stuffed animals when I was in like 6th and 7th grade. And I never stuck with it and I forgot it. So now I don't give a crap about it anymore. But I did go through a sewing phase. and But I made stuffed animals. Like right. monsters and stuff. So I was still making stuff that boys would traditionally like. You know, my daughter, I, I've never tried to nudge my daughter towards girly things. As a matter of fact, secretly I was hoping that she would like, like, stuff that I would like like when she went shopping I was hoping she was interested in cars and instead of Littlest Pet Shop but she she chose Littlest Pet Shop <laughs> 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 she chose Littlest Pet Shop what's funny is all these things we're describing are normal it, basically behaviors it, it, has, right. it, it has no intrinsic tie to biology at least as I think far it as it does you think it does. I don't think I do. it does. It has more to do with the environment and, and the social norms that raised around. influencing. I think them that's a significant before, factor, too. It, I think it influences them before they're even conscious. I think that biology comes into play. That there is, there are, there are, uh, what's, there are what's, certain, what's, there are what's certain urges and instincts and stuff like that. There are endocrinal stuff. Differences, yes. hormonal differences, us. all of those things, but those things aren't made perfectly or in a straight line. It's not as simple as one or the other. Right. It, it does. It has a gradient. It does blend, and there is some confusion, and that's where I can understand. Right. Uh, what is it? Gender dysmorphia. Then yeah, yeah. Then yeah, is just, it gender? I dys think so. Dysmorphia. I think that's it. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Or if yeah. we're wrong. Java's David comment. Valentine says, Broad code is for scumbags to feel better about themselves. Hey, that's Thanks. I won't say that's entirely true, but that's a lot of truth to that, David. It's like, yo, man, bro code. Yo, man. Totally right. cheated on her. Bro code. Right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Not cool. Nope. Yeah. I'm... See, I... I was going through... I've been going through this process, so... I've been thinking, listen, man, biology and there, there, the, 
the gender constructs that are developed, they're let, let me let me start from uh, earlier beginning. When I was in uh, anthropology class, the 1991, 90, this was like my first year. I was going to Harrisburg Area Community College. So you studied and anthrops. I did. Uh, Corwin Hale, I remember this guy because he used to he used to love talking about brachiating, and they were brachiating through the forest. But he said something that really stuck with me, and that was nothing happens that does not have, nothing happens socially, societally, that does not have a reason. Now, the reason might be ill-informed, but yes. like... Uh, like he gave as an example, he was talking about uh, the Aztecs and how they slaughtered, you know, they had human sacrifices and they would kill whatever, you know, they would kill their captors sometimes and they would have these human, sometimes they would kill lots and lots of people. Right. And then some of them would, would feed off of them and to a certain degree and they're like, well, you know, they, are they just cruel, inhuman, evil bastards? Maybe. No, no. They had limited resources. And during times of struggle, it's like they couldn't, they didn't uh, own their preferences to come to realize that, hey, some people got to die because we don't wow. got enough mouths to feed. We're all going to starve. I never so they developed a. Go ahead. I never thought about it that way. That's amazing. So they developed a whole ritualistic system that gave them a peace of mind. To not have to face the ugly, he didn't quite word it like this. I'm adding some of my own stuff now, but uh, to 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 have to avoid their 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 naked reality, somebody got die. Yeah, and who got die? You you, you know the, you're going to kill the other before you kill yourself. You're going to kill, kill the young, and you're going to kill the kill, old. You're going to kill the ones that aren't producing. Yeah. And that's who they ended up killing for the most part, other than also some political deaths as well. Yeah, so that's any, that's any culture at any time. It's we like, always have political sacrifice. Well, yeah. Yeah, I was just listening to uh, Prof. CJ's uh, Dangerous History podcast, and he's going mm -hmm. through the Civil War, and he talked about, oh, who, I, don't, I can't remember who had this quote. And it was something along the line of... Uh, uh, when when you're fighting for God, you don't count the dead, and that makes a lot of sense. And then he played, you know, glory, glory, hallelujah. Again, you have a situation where you have come to a, a place where, because of your preference, you have you have decided that you need to do something brutal, something that human beings we have this dichotomy about us. And part of this is we, I think we have this instinct, whatever it's from to not want to kill one another and destroy one another. Uh, we also have an instinct to want to kill and destroy one another, but we yeah. have developed rituals and methodologies that enable us to shield ourselves from the naked decisions that we've made. So we sing glory, glory, hallelujah before we go off to war and <laughs> killing. Like, yeah. you know, that Mark Twain poem, you know, with, with the the guy that says, listen, 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 you're not doing the prayers right. You're not singing them 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 songs right. Let's do it right, you know. Let's 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 call on God to to help us find the woman that's alone in the field with her child and let's pray that she gets crushed. Let's pray that this village loses everything that it can't feed itself that women and children are starving in the streets because that's what war is folks so if you're going to be honest about i mean if you're going to have war be honest about it face the naked truth you know pray to god that, that god helps you you know rape the children and uh you know just just death mayhem destruction you know <laughs>
that's what you're that's what you're advocating for. That's what you're participating in. Wow. Wow. I'm for sure you had some response to that. I'm I'm speechless. It was a performance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't I I can't I but uh, um Wow. Yeah, I'm just um you're stuck on the Aztecs, aren't you? E not so much. I'm still trying to I'm trying to think of how we can wrap this back. I'm trying to oh. do my witty, my witty loop back, and, I, and I'm and I, I'm struggling. The witty loop back is uh, we have an individual who doesn't fit into our paradigm for who and what we are, mm -hmm. and who and what we are is we are man, we are woman, and we have developed a whole bunch of rituals to give us justification to what it is to be man. And what it is to be woman, we have whole institutions built around it. We have all codes of ethics built around it. And then along comes Mac Beggs. And Mac Beggs is just a dude. That, uh, uh, speaking of gender roles and stuff, something like opening your uh, generic Tide Pods is a man's job, apparently. Well. It's a childproof but, box. <laughs> We're Crossing the age barrier to it. But guess. I guess you'll do. <laughs> I guess, I'll... guess you'll do in a pinch. So you I'll wait. My... Everybody else will wait too. Do you have any text messages to check? Well, I don't have any text <laughs> messages to check right now. I'm good. We're so, good rolling. But that's a prime example, I guess. But no, it's just. Uh, Two individuals who have different skill sets, and as it so happens, more often than not, a male will more often than not have that skill set that the women won't have. They'll be generally stronger. Is that the way it has to be? I don't know. I'll get to that. No. But with, with with Matt Beggs, this guy comes along and he really he doesn't fit into that paradigm. He he's there's something about him that 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 shakes the the model in your head that causes you to go outside the rituals and the customs and the mores. Which is what's so hilarious about all the conservatives getting mad thinking he was he, he's originally a, a boy. Yeah, yeah, they think he's a boy transitioning to a girl. He passed. Basically, they're giving him the biggest compliment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, big. yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, you, you, I, I don't... I, I'm not necessarily like I'm not like going around. Yay, transgenders, awesome! I don't know about it. I, 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 I still that. got questions. I do that because I like to rock. I, I like the idea of rocking the boat. Yeah, I, I just I just love anything that challenges the paradigm and can succeed and show any kind of. Uh, I don't want to say progress because that's kind of a loaded word, but progress. Um, in, in just human understanding and in, in the next envelope. Because I think eventually the gender differences, or at least the the binary... Um, the male-female. That... Ma the male-female paradigm is going to dissolve. It's going to dissolve. Because the, the biological differences are going to be overcome by science. And I think eventually we'll all just be little gray, big-headed, big-eyed, no-nosed space creatures. And I have, <laughs> I mean, I could say, I'll just, I, what I could say objectively <laughs> is this. If suddenly I was magically transformed and I became one of those gray things, life would suck. I don't think but so. Because think for about those this. gray things, it might be awesome. It might be awesome because you're not concerned about what you're going to wear. You're not concerned about what you look like. You're not concerned about your function in society. You can do what you want to do and you're not being judged for your appearance. Maybe I like having a different appearance. Maybe I like that. You Maybe know, you could be the gray alien with a shiny jumpsuit while the rest have the you know, plain green ones or some shit. I could be the radical. I'd be like, you know, I, I would be persecuted for being a man. <laughs> I'm a man. What the heck is that? That's unnatural. Uh, <laughs> I love it. You, There's, 
Everything's that, natural, by the like, way. You dress up like Duke Nukem and start walking around. Yeah, everything's natural, by the way. Like, even anomalies are natural. Everything's like, natural. Mutations <laughs> are natural. Because <laughs> they happen in Is nature. That... <laughs> you stole so, my so what's happened with uh, Mr. Mac Beggs is he, yeah, he, 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 he messes with the paradigm. He takes people out of their comfortable rituals, customs, mores, and they got to start to, to stand on who and what they really are. And at the end of the day, I don't, I'm not saying that somebody might come up to me and give me like an amazing objective reason why it is that we should be man and woman and we should always be man and women. Well, you can't. I mean, uh, right. you unless you start with a like preference. If say, well, would you prefer the human race to survive? And I say, yes. Okay. Well, then I can objectively show you that if we are not male and female, that we will not survive. Okay. Maybe you can do that. I don't know. That's a, but that's a falsifiable claim, though, because we can actually. Oh yeah. Eventually, prove that it's not necessary. It is kind of well. Th what is we're, necessary? We're on that edge of where yeah, it's that's not necessary for reproduction. So how significant? That's amazing. Yes. It's, it's mind blowing. Yeah, it's. <laughs> it's fantastic, that, actually. Everything that we thought we knew about the world is is fundamentally being undermined, and it's not just the postmodernists that are doing it. Oh, you no, know, I, I don't want to trigger you. <laughs> trigger you. <laughs> uh, it's not just the postmodernists; it's the scientists. And uh, uh, oh, oh, I have somebody on the phone here. Hold on one second. Hey, you're on the show. Well, you're not really on the show. Nobody can hear you. How may I help you? Okay, you said, okay, all right, all right, all right. Well, listen, I'll talk to you after the show. Goodbye, sir. That was my brother, by the way. Ah, William. Dysphoria, is it dysphoria? Dysphoria? I think so. Is it, I thought it was dysmorphia. I thought it was dysphoria. Let me, let me, you know what, now I'm bothered, now I gotta know. I think it's gender dysphoria. It's, dis, it's, it's dysmorphia oh dysphoria or gender oh you're right i was right i was right you said that you should listen to me more often i should listen to you more often i just said don't that, that t-shirt that t-shirt already, already made me money all right hey actually i, I contributed to that <laughs> you did oh as a matter of fact uh i will be that's going to be my new t-shirt for the monday show i can't wait by the way uh, the the T-shirt says, uh, "What's it say?" It says, uh, uh, e "By the way, uh, that I wrote, I wrote that. I I just wrote that as a Facebook, like, just you know, you know what you do. I think got like now for me, this is big. It's not huge viral, but got over a hundred shares and seventy, sixty or seventy likes on my personal page. That got a hundred shares on your personal page. Yeah." Holy crap. Well, I, I keep seeing people sharing it. I don't even know who these people were. Most most of them weren't my friends. Yeah, but it says, I'd rather face the danger of a madman with a gun than empower the state to define what a madman is. Yeah, that. Yeah, that. And I stand by those words. And it has nothing to do with voting because voting is stupid. Whether you're voting the way I like you to vote or not, which I actually can't think of a way that I'd like you to vote. So I'm trying to find it here so I can show it to the studio audience on Agora. Agora, where? How do I find it on? It's not on the front here. I see follow, send clothids. Oh, yeah. I don't have it up on on that shop yet. It's on It's on threadless. Agora.threadless. Oh, yeah, I'm there. Agora.threadless.com. Designs, and then it should be Madman. Collections, accessories, home. It should just be it. designs. Man, you are talking about no designs, stuff like Look that. Look at the bottom where it says, like, see more. Okay, let's see if I can... 
I really want to find this. I'm going to show this. Oh, I survived Rapture. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I'm like, not. I'm not. I'm not finding it, man. That sucks. I wanted to show it to the studio audience, but well, like, I guess I'm, I'm pulling it up on mine. So there, we'll show that there. You can see it on you can see on, on D on D Live. Oh, here it is. I found it. Oh, right. It shows shows my shop discount. Damn it. Ah. <laughs> uh, I always Mad do that. Men. Mad men. I think I got did I get the gray one or the black one? I don't remember. I I switched back and forth between them two. Cuz the black one, the gray one looks pretty good. Mhm. Mm all righty. All right. Gotta go smoke. Let's go smoke. Let's see what smoke looks like. All right. Let me let me find the. Uh, I think I have. Boom. There it is. There it is. There it is. You yep. got it, Jeff Pauly Gordon's. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. This is gonna be my T-shirt that I'm gonna wear for the Monday show. Still not gonna wear threadless during the Tuesday show when I actually have you on. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm actually wearing one of your ideas. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. I didn't remember Mark. what that says. What's that say? Yeah, can't read it anymore. Does it say? Uh, the, this flag, my, I changed mine. This flag I wear is the flag of my oppressor. And it's oh, yes, down. that's right. Yeah. That's how we... Well, we had kind of met before that, but that's how we like more, like, right. you put significantly the connected. You put the challenge out there to to have it designed. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, I watched this guy's show. I really like his stuff. Maybe he'll uh, promote it for me. And then I realized you're not as big as I thought you were. Oh, that hurts. That hurts, man. That's. But we've grown together. I feel bad. I feel really bad. I feel hey, like this, crying. This feel live stream. Already, this live stream's already made another thirty bucks. All right, you caught a whale. Good job. I got, I got the D Live booster. I got the D Live booster. That's good. We're gonna <sighs> split that right for beer, right? Yeah, of course. Go on a beer run. Sure. I don't Bacon even drink beer. You can drink all the beer. How's that? Nah. I haven't, I haven't haven't drank beer in a while. I my uh my friend Dimitri, uh, he had me try something called white whiskey. I never tried wet whiskey before. It's basically like a fancy moonshine. Is what it really is. I don't know why this image is all messed up looking though. But whatever. Let's get what? back to Mac Beggs. Let's get back yeah. to him. This is Mr. a one. It's nice. I I don't yeah I don't I'm just I'm not in the mood. I'm in the mood for. For a, a wandering kind of show. You know what? I got to stay on the show title thing because my image is messed up. And I can't fix it right now. So, <coughs> so my my view of, uh, I have a reason for saying this. My, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not like pro-transgender. I don't, I'm not fully convinced that transgenderism is a good, healthy thing. I think it might be some sort of disorder. What is disorder, right? right? What does that mean? Uh, if if you have uh, something that makes you deviate from the script, that doesn't fundamentally alter your ability to interact with the individuals around you, then is it a disorder or just... A deviation from the script I think part of it is a deviation from the script in terms of how the outside looks into it but I think for the individual it's a it's a pretty severe disorder um, and the ways to treat it or to make that bearable are what you see as transgender tra well transition is to is to have them be more comfortable in their body as they identify because imagine imagine being you paul gordon and never feeling quite right in your body like you just shouldn't be a man i, I see myself in the mirror i got no issues 
I look right. in the mirror and I'm like, who is that gorgeous? Oh, that's me. You and no don't. problems. You don't. I don't. Some people, I've known individuals that do. And I've had extensive conversations with that just, they, they have, they, it's severe issues with depression and acceptance and all sorts of other issues. And I remember trying to, um, at least convince my friend before doing hormone therapy to actually just, you know, take a minute and find a way to be okay with yourself the way you are. And that was next to impossible. No matter what they did, no matter how they thought, no matter how much therapy, they still felt like just it wasn't right and they weren't who they should be. And it was either it's the physical portrayal, it's the hormonal, it's the hormonal experience, it's all of that. Yeah, one of one of the things that I worry about with you know, everything is pro gay every day, all the time. We got to inject gayness into everything. Now we have to inject transgenderism into everything. Is it's it's become a uh, like a like a fashion trend i don't to think be so gay, I, to be transgendered I, I think what we're seeing is a proliferation of i was going to make a point but go ahead oh of, gen, of no, general no, go ahead. Of, of general acceptance of of this different of this paradigm shift for some individuals and it's just becoming more prominent i don't it's not really i don't think it's forced down anyone's throats per se well in some places it is i would say some of the yeah that that there is there is a segment there, there is are a political faction and i and i want to be very careful not to broadly paint uh you know do a broadly a broad brush stroke here uh because i'm not going to say the left because it's not the left it's a no. segment there's a faction within the left that most i believe most assuredly uses gay issues and transgender issues as political weapons more right. than just, I mean, it's, it's almost like, you know, like the whole cisgender thing. It's, it's almost like, like now it's a bad thing to be heterosexual, right? Which, which you're going to, you're going to, we're going to get rid of one stigma, which I'm okay. I don't want people being condemned because they're different than me. Unless the difference than me is hurting others. But right. I don't want to replace it with another stigma that somehow being heterosexual is is like bad thing. And I I, I think that there is this it's not as br I don't believe that it's as broad as people make it out to be. I think it's a real thing. I don't think it's as powerful and uh all encompassing as 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 the fear mongers will tell you it is but there is kind of a victim olympics out there and, oh yeah and they've developed a victim they this small group of people and they have some cultural influence but they've developed this hierarchy and there are people i believe and this is my worry with transgenderism is I believe that there are some people that are going to go down the transgenderism road that they're, they're, they're not, it's not gender dysphoria. It's something else, but because it's, it's almost like you get the standing ovation. If you stand up and say, I'm transgendered, right. I'm, I'm, you know, whatever gender fluid or, or whatever it might be. But I'll add this. And then I'll let you interrupt me. I'll add this. To some degree, I think what you're seeing is it's almost like you go through life where you don't touch cigarettes, you can't touch cigarettes, cigarettes are bad and evil, and then you get to a moment where all of a sudden you're in a socially acceptable place to smoke cigarettes, and you go nuts with it. And that might be to some degree what we're here, what we're seeing here. If if that's the case, this is going to settle down and we'll find a more even reality, if you will, of, of, of 
the degree to which people are transgendered, gay, gender fluid, whatever it might be, the, the excitement and the experimentation will start to become, you know, it'll start to bureaucratize itself <laughs> like everything else. Well, that's, that's what I'm afraid of, especially with uh, the, way, the way the liberty movement basically treats transgenderism. Uh, just on a general whole, even uh, I guess we could go as far as the alt right, but ANCAPs and even some commies and uh, more conservative types, uh, they generally begin to bash anyone that's gay, transgender, or or any bit outside of this heterogeneous uh, white male white children culture kind of like the purity the the conservative family model uh and they rail against gays and transgenders and what's that what i think that's doing is creating a backlash to where now those individuals who had no acceptance in the liberty movement aren't going to embrace the liberty movement they're going to go straight to what does accept them and that is the state in, in the left, in, in the state. Yeah, I, I, I don't think ultimately that I, I well, I mean, That's I react, guess. I've been reacting various ways, not so greatly to, as I've seen, uh, you know, the gay agenda, the, the, the everybody, they want to make everybody gay. And, and I felt those fears. And, and I, I don't think they're completely unfounded. I just no. think on a scale of one to ten in, in terms of legitimate threat, like a, a threat as in they're going to totally stigmatize heterosexuality. They're going to totally, you know, even in the race issue, you know, we are white, you're heterosexual, you're Christian, you're male, a cisgendered Christian, white male, you're toast. There's some degree of stigma and that that's being developed around the white heterosexual Christian male and being that guy that kind of sucks i just as i've been looking into this more and more i i don't think the threat is nearly as pronounced as people imagine it is it, it, there is a threat there is there is real effort from some people to totally stigmatize the christian white heterosexual male i think in the long run i think things are going to settle out and and when i say settle out i don't mean like you know, we'll go back to the way we were. No, what I mean is it's going to get to people aren't going to be so shocked and awed and inspired or disgusted, whichever way you want to go, by somebody who's transgendered, somebody who's gay. It's like it's not going to be a big deal one way Something or another. It's like, yay. You're not going to have that anymore. It's right. just going to be, I am gay. Well, great. I have, you know, I could do this with my thumb. <laughs> yeah, no. that's that's what it'll be and then and i think you're going to start to see more leveling off like you know who are we biologically in combination with our culture and our society and who makes who and you know will 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 there be more gay people more transgender people because it's accepted uh, i don't know y you may end up getting more gay and transgender people just because maybe people will breed more with people who have that predilection and to the degree to which that's in your dna i don't know i don't know i don't care i really yeah it doesn't it I, doesn't make I a difference can't even me. control it nobody can well no, you, you can but you can't I control others Basically, yeah, someone I, decides that's what they're gonna. If that's what they're decided on. That's what they're decided on. That's how they identify. Well, you can what, control others. I just don't advocate for it. I, I used to be the guy that would be like, "Oh, well, it's a he. Why are you saying she?" Blah 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 blah. Until I started, you know, talking to some transgenders, and I realized what how, how ridiculous that is, especially in argumentations. Like, well, you mean she? Like. There, there's people that are insistent upon misgendering based on their narrow view of the world and missing the actual conversation because they're so focused on a detail. Well, you you look at Mac Beggs. Mac looks like a dude. Yep. Um, whatever that means, because there's plenty of dudes that 
they would call themselves dude. They identify as dudes, and they look more girly than than duty. And and women that look more duty than girly that totally identify as women, whatever the case might be. But you know, when I think of Mac, I think of Mac is kind of like in a different category, not yeah. a male, not a female. Well, male identified, I guess, but I don't know. It kind of blurs the lines, and I don't know in nature that that's. Well, it happens in nature. I mean, look look at it does. the uh, look at the That's asexual. We did a few weeks ago. The asexual crayfish. Well, the asexual crayfish is one thing, but the you know the 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 goose that took up with the black swan. Right. Yeah. It, it's a very natural. It, it there is a constant blurring of those lines. Yeah, so I'm 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 not so hung up on. I mean, I, I'm against coercion in all its forms. So if you want, well, I won't say all its forms. I don't want to say absolutely I'm against coercion, but I think you'd be hard pressed to find a situation that I would advocate for coercion. But who knows? Yeah, I bet you you can come up with something, some really really weird tricky scenario, like self defense. Uh, well, other than self-defense, um, <laughs> that, that one's the obvious one. Yeah, duh. But but that's why I like I I generally because because of that blurring of the line and because of the idea of coercion or whatever, I personally default to what the individual wants to be identified as, out of just respect for the individual. Me too. Yeah, that's that's it's me too. That's, now, if you if you if you want me to call you Shimal instead of he or, you know, and and I call you dude and you get all like totally, I mean, because I'll try to call you Shimal, whatever. I don't care. But if but if Shimal, if, if I if I like look at you and I say, yo, dude, and you go all like total ritualistic, religious, puritanical, burn me at the stake on me, I'm going to call you dude from now on. <laughs> just because you ticked me off but if just you're a, like a normal person and like dude i prefer not to be called dude I'm, oh okay i'm sorry but if you get like oh how dare you you're a white male you're a cisgender okay dude that dude, dude 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 right well i call everyone dude he's a dude she's so a dude. do i so do i Everybody's dude i mean i i call my car dude like I, you call your car, dude. I call my car everything. So you're part of the patriarchy. <sighs> you, 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 you identify everything with dudeness. So all of the world is wrapped up in a patriarchal identity. Dude begins and ends the universe. I mean, I've used dudette. I've used bodette. Dudette is just a. It's a bo- just a. There's, there's Bodie and the bodette. There's. I hope I'm not the boat at. That'd be weird. No, you're not um, the boat. Oh, good. Woo, that's a relief. <laughs> I do not want to be a boat dad. I did not sign up to be a boat dad. But going forward, what's going to be interesting is. Well, we won't see it so much in our lifetime, but but one never never knows. I I, th- I was talking to you a little bit about this before the show. Who and what we are the maleness and the femaleness for a long time. I've been saying, listen, man, it's obvious. I mean, men are fundamentally different than women. I mean, there are differences. There are exceptions out, you know, in, in the fringes, there are, there are, there are things that, you know, there are women that are more like men and men were more like women. And in the case of, even for me, you know, Mac, Mac, Mac is, I don't know Mac personally. I don't know his full story and his journey, but very well, Mac could be one of those folks that absolutely was born with a vagina, but absolutely in all the key ways kind of kind of fits more into what we would call male. Right. Whatever that means. So I I I, I even allowed for that, but you know, within my 
you know, nature has these extremes and these exceptions. Yeah. But like, or yeah. But my little epiphany thought recently has been, I've always struggled ever since I was a kid to understand, you know, nature versus nurture. To what degree are we defined by culture? What degree are we defined by our society, our customs? What degree is it our biology? And then right. you add that, you know, you got the, the, the race realists. And yeah, the race realists, there's some truth to what they say. I mean... I mean, Hitler had some truth, okay? I'm just going to say, not everything, like if Hitler told you that the sun rose in the east, he said he had some truth. So so they can identify, for instance, that if, you ha if your culture rewards certain behaviors and you tend to breed with people that manifest those behaviors, you could end up producing in the DNA this, tendency for that particular culture i don't think it's a race thing so much as a culture thing though but right uh, well I th and then there's the question of how much can we affect and change the biology we're beginning well, to have power over the biological processes including gene therapy well yeah you you're 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 talking about going in and 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 changing your dna to be you can change yourself i mean yeah. we're real close to that so you could totally, that whole race realism thing is really going to go. I don't think, again, with the race realist, I think that there's, uh, that it doesn't have as, as, as nearly a powerful lasting effect on a group of people as they imagine it does. That it can be, if you change the culture, you quickly change the types of folks that emerge from that culture. Uh, but. Uh, where I was going with this is a lot of the things that I think about as men tend to be this way and women tend to be that way. And, you know, men are are more aggressive, generally speaking. They do. They want to go to war. They want to fight. They want to have adventures. They want to be heroes, all that stuff. And women, they tend to want to be, uh, you know, they're more introspective. They're verbal. They're nurturing. And And my thought was... It was the big epiphany thought, which I should have had, you know, years ago. It's one of those dub moments. Like, how the heck? Why didn't you think of that a long time ago? What if most of the differences between men and women are the product of selective breeding? Yeah. And multiple. And we're, and we're multiple. And you, if you look at the reality, the physical reality of cultures around the world. Most cultures had to deal on the ground level with some real harsh, brutal realities in which it was it was very clear that having a group of people who were nurturing, who could take care of the young, uh, was good, while also having a group of people that could go out and do violent things. You needed people to do violent things. Well, that stuff is starting to leave. We don't need that nearly as much. So what's going to happen in the near future, 20 years, 50 years from now? Uh, this is what I think a lot of people say uh, transhumanism is uploading your brain to a computer. But I think transhumanism is using science and technology to basically trump our normal biological processes and processes and, and limitations basically offloading that from the individual and allowing a new form of freedom and, and, and insight into new avenues that weren't viable before. Yeah. Instead of uploading your brain onto a computer, you could end up augmenting you're, your brain. You're, you're outsourcing your processes. We do it now with our phones. What's the last phone number you, re, you had to remember I don't right that's an example yeah basically. I, you know, I, there's I, things I can't we don't have to remember it uh, we don't have to worry about how far the earth is from the sun we can always google it on average it's 93 million miles but you can look that up you know you can look that up you know you can reference that information so you don't need to you don't need to hold on to it they're like how teachers, oh, well, you're not going to have a calculator in your pocket all the time. 
it's wow, actually. When, when writing started to come into being and become more prominent, uh, there were, I, I don't know if it was, so maybe it was Socrates, it was one of them one Greek dudes, that they said that with the advent of writing, that people will no longer commit to memory the things that they used to commit to memory because mm -hmm. now they can write it down. And he was right. The people who existed before, they had huge, that they, 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 they would spend their lives memorizing vast epics. Right. You know, much a, m much of scripture, for instance, I'm sure, comes through that mimetic process where the or oral history, even oral even history, the Odyssey and and the and, Iliad, and so humans lost something because of writing, but they gained too, and that's what'll happen right. in the next iteration. We'll lose something and we'll gain something. And it's and happening exponentially on so many different fronts. It's basically decentralizing. Yeah. I you know, I I I, I have this challenge. This, oh is, this is a scary thing. This really goes to the core of my faith. This is this is the fundamental challenging question for me. I think I've said this to you before. So in Genesis uh in the story of the Tower of Babel, what had happened was, in, in this story, whether it's a mythology or it actually happened, I don't, I don't really care. It's, it's a, it's a powerful thematic story. In this story, humanity understood one another, like they all spoke the sp same language, like. They perfectly understood one another, and they could do almost anything that they set their minds to do. And so what were they doing? They were building a tower. It says, you know, a tower to heaven. Were they building a tower to heaven? They weren't building a tower to heaven. They knew there was that heaven was not up in the skies. Heaven is another plane. They were building a device to transport to heaven. They were looking to conquer heaven, to conquer God, to become the rulers of heaven. And at that moment, God, another one of those let us moments in Genesis, uh, referring to himself as us, said, let us, let us divide them. God scatters them to and fro, confuses them, gives them all different languages, puts right. a mega language barrier between them. It's where you get the word, you know, babble, you know, babble, yep. not, you know, nonsense. So what's happening now is humans are starting to come together and they're starting to understand each other. Like they're not, they don't even need to speak the same language. They have translators. So, and they go to, and they go to space together. They go to space together and, what are they doing across the spheres? They're building metaphorical uh, portals to heaven. So if I'm right, if my faith is right, we don't have a lot of time left. <laughs> God is going to have to do something because human beings are about ready to enter into heaven and demand their place on that throne. So... I guess we'll see. I don't know if I'll live long enough to see like the moment where if I'm right, that's it. That's the end of, it, of the end. Or if there is no end, if there is no end, then you got some hard questions to ask. <clears throat> Fun questions to ask. I don't have those questions to ask now, but they, they, no, they could come. I don't, I don't know enough to not know enough to have a question. Yeah. That makes sense. It does. It does. Absolutely. It does. Absolutely. I know enough about scripture to, to ask believe. questions. About it. There's a question. <laughs> there are some questions to be asked because there are some towers being built and they're really close, dude. When you if and when you have that moment where human beings can actually reproduce themselves and they produce a human being 
my theory is, because of my faith, my theory is that if and when human beings are able to produce a human being, like they're talking about being able to take a woman's egg and using the DNA in her egg to produce a genetically create a, a, a 3D printed sperm mm -hmm. from her egg that would allow her to impregnate herself or, you know, maybe her, her, her feet, her other probably would rather do it with another woman. So two women maybe. take their eggs and they can actually have a baby together. Yeah. And my theory, if I'm right about my faith, my theory is that baby is not going to be of this world. It's going to be, it's going to be a bad thing. It's going to be like Damien, children of the corn. <laughs> but if Damien doesn't happen, if children of the corn doesn't happen, then you got some questions. But no doubt that that baby, even if that baby is not Damien, you know, if that baby is not children of the corn, that, that baby's going to have a hard slog because you think that people are triggered by uh, someone who was born a, a male and decides that they're a female or vice versa. Why do you meet the first kid who was born of two female eggs? Right. That kid's going to have some issues. <laughs> that kid might very well have not been a Damien, but society will turn him into Damien. <laughs> right. That's so. that's what I fear. Is it, it there's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy w with in terms of um railing against paradigm shifts. Cuz you can't really rail against them. You can only make matters worse. I'll stand by that, absolutely. You can't really... I think you can rail against paradigms, and you can, you I, can I don't halt them, succeed. alter them, delay them. It's happened. It'll happen but, again. But I think they'll always happen. Once the precedent has been set, it's a matter of time until the old paradigm dies. Yeah, once the genie is out of the bottle. Right. And it's it's awfully. I mean, yeah, I think, and I will say, I, I'll stand. It hasn't been halted. It's been delayed. Right. Paradigms have been delayed, and usually with great violence. Lots usually, of... it requires great violence, but it, it you can't you can't change it. We're discovering more and more who we are as humans, and and what we're not. Well, yeah. Well, when we discover who we are, we automatically discover who we're not. And, you know, what I'm, I, that's why, at least so far, my little philosophy that I've developed, which I'm sure somebody else developed it, and I have no idea that I'm just totally parroting somebody <laughs> who developed it 300 years ago. You that know, I'm not saying I'm incredibly unique, but my little philosophy of uh, standing on your preferences, knowing your, your root of, what your preferences are to the degree that you can. And uh, that's where your obje objectiveness then begins to emerge once you understand what your preferences are. And that's where your, your morality emerges once you understand what your preferences are. That that doesn't require me to have... I mean, I suppose it could require me to have some incredibly vested interest in identities like the male identity the christian identity the white identity the right. paul gordon identity uh whatever you you know go down and in and, and and then the less that you are owned by identity the less terrifying change is yeah because you're able to adapt and shift and, yes. and and take in new information, which is, I yes. think, a good thing. And I'm not saying that identity is a bad thing. Identity is useful. It certainly oh, yeah. is useful it's, for me in a lot of ways. But, but I think what's, what's most important, I made a post about it today, the most important label is the one you give yourself. Yeah, absolutely. The most important, well, and the problem is that most people they don't give themselves a label. They, I mean, they may to a certain they let, degree. They let the environment label them. They, they get their value from the environment around them. They don't have value coming. From, they don't have a self-value. 
They're so working. Very vulnerable. They're working to convince the environment to reflect back to them the identity they want to have, yes. rather than simply owning their identity and giving and, that to the world, and giving that to the world, and not caring if the world gives you back something that you know is not you. Yep. Although sometimes the world actually does give you, because you can't fully know yourself. <laughs> Uh, no. So, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm I'm not tied so greatly to identity on a good day. On a bad yeah. day, I could be. But an interesting thing, like the Philadelphia Eagles, still a big part of my identity that I have not let go. And in large part, the Philadelphia Eagles are a major part of who I am because of the history that I've created around that image. Well, the changing images because their uniforms change. But that, that, that helmet, that, that, that eagle wing on that green helmet, that invokes something in me. It's like it's, it's not quite re religious, but it's approaching that level. And it's an archetype that was built into me as a kid. It was it was one of my first uh, tribes that I ever joined, and I was totally accepted. Like, the only condition was that you love the Eagles. Nailed that. <laughs> so so it, it, it's so ingrained in me. So I have a hard time, even though, like, I can objectively look and say there's a lot of reasons that, being a sports fan actually conflicts some of my preferences. Not all of them, but, but some of my major preferences. Yep. But it's still hard for me to let go. And yet, other images or other identities are really easy for me to let go. Like, did I watch the Olympics this year? I watched the Olympics every year. I loved the Olympics. I can't watch the Olympics. Right. I can... I can identify with the Philadelphia Eagles, even though I understand some of the state on state face aspects and how they do their Star Spangled Banner and all that, you know, triggered, triggered. But mm -hmm. the freaking Olympics, it's all about states. It's all about nation states. It's, right. it's to it's me, I mean, for and me. It's supposed, to be, it's supposed to be about coming together across nations and, and dissolving borders, but, but it doesn't. But it's exactly. not. It's, yeah. it's about proving that your nation state has the biggest schlonger. Yeah. Right. Ridiculous. The, the gold medal chase. Who has the? So I couldn't watch it. I couldn't bring myself to watching it. I just couldn't do it. it, it and I don't begrudge anyone who calls themselves an anarchist and a libertarian if they enjoyed it. I'm not. You, you go. You have fun. And enjoy it. But, but that wasn't. That's an identity that I've lost. I have no. I I haven't hung on to any usefulness when it comes to that identity. So it's no. cool. I you look like you're ready to go. Like I need to go, yeah. I, I sense that. I sense the my gosh, this guy won't shut the hell. <laughs> hey man, this we did the show, man. It's ten oh seven, man. Ten oh seven. We got it. I nailed this puppy. Right now. Do we head. have a way to wrap this up? Um, Mac Beggs did nothing wrong. And paradigm shifts will happen. Don't hold on yeah. to identity too hard. I say this, you know, um, I don't. I, I mean, the culture and society—it's a competition to a certain degree. And if you'd like culture and society to be a certain way, go ahead and do that. Just don't do it at the expense of trying to destroy other people, like yeah. trying to to make Matt Beg Mac Beg feel like he's he's some sort of subhuman. That's not the way to do it. If you, if you like the male-female paradigm and the traditional marriage and nuclear family, well, live it and show the world why that's the best way to live. Uh, you know, don't be afraid of competition, though, and don't react all horrible, horrid, horridly when people say, hey, maybe there's a different way. Fair enough. I'll go with right? that. Yeah. And on that note, I say... Good night, everybody. Good night.